Hello, I'm Adam from Refuels, and today I'm going to be showing you another World Builder tutorial on the tool splines. Okay, so once you've loaded up a World Builder blank canvas like this, use your mouse to navigate to the tool up here called Spline Placement on the top bit here. Click on that, it's like a brown squiggle with a yellow bit in it. Click on that, like I said, on the right you'll see a big massive toolbar load up. Like this. I know it looks daunting, but we'll go through it step by step and it shouldn't take too long. On the right side here, you've got your different modes, textures, objects, deform. Click on texture, it should load up as that default, and tick that. If it's already ticked, keep it as it is. We'll skip this bit now, and we'll skip that bit. Move straight down to textures here, and it should look something like that. Yeah, big texture, with a big pink texture preview box there. Then navigate to field, use this as our test one, open it up by pressing that, or by double clicking it, and click on, say the first one, buyer farm, that's what mine says. And as you can see, these are all the different textures under the subfolder field, like this. Try and stay away from the normal and specular ones, they're slightly strange, just click on the ones without that. So choose that one, and then on your canvas, right click, as you can see a circle has now appeared, big yellow circle, and do that four times in total, as you can see, four, gotta be four, it has to be four control points, the circles are called control points, so once you've put down four, or more, press enter. And there you go, hopefully your texture is now loaded, and it's the farm one that's shown here in the texture preview box. And you can left click and hold it, and you can move it about. You can click on it. And then, if you hold shift whilst clicking it, you can rotate it. Fascinating. Truly fascinating, that is. <laughs> um, and if you press spacebar, you can then manipulate the spline. As you can see, the control points have now came back up. And what you can do is highlight one of the control points. And you can bend it like that to make corners and bends. You can increase the distance between the two control points. Now, talking about increasing distance between the control points, I'll show you another way to do it. So if you hit space again, there you go. So you stop manipulating it. You can go up here, click on the text on um, the spline, and here where it says control points on the right, you can add another control point or take away another con a, t a control point from either the back or the front of the spline. So we want to add one to the front of the spline now. So I'm going to click add to front under control points here. You can see it added an extra one then, increased the length of the spline slightly, and then I can remove it from the front just by doing that. I can add one to the back here. I click in the add to back bit. And then the remove to get rid of the one. If you make too many control points or you want to get rid of one, you click back on the spline, press space again, so you're manipulating it, highlight a control point, and then press delete off your, on your keyboard. And as you can see, it deleted that control point, deleted that one, deleted that one. But there's got to be four left in total. Now I know you're screaming in awe, saying wow that's amazing, but I don't like the colour of my texture, or I want it to be less uh, less blatant, we we'll use that word, less blatant, so you want it to be more transparent, a, a bit less, a bit more opaque, so you can see the textures under, underneath the spline. So, you highlight your spline like this, and on your right, under texture edit mode, where it says colourise, click on the colourise. You can see a new toolbar, um, toolbox has came up in the top left. And here, there are two white lines. Click anywhere there, anywhere there, doesn't matter. Then make sure that you've clicked on one, like that. These basically add sections, in a sense of like painting sections, to your spline. So you can then paint certain bits on your spline, the distance from there to there 
or anywhere in between there and there, this white bit here. So highlight one by clicking on it. And then here, where it says alpha, which is basically transparency, you can move it up or down. So if I put it down and then press apply, so it'll apply the changes I've made, it's made it more opaque here. You'll see that again? If I put it up, made it less opaque, Get it down. like that. You can do this on multiple sections, so if I click on this little bar here, move it down, it's done it here. And then you can move it, you can move the transparency so it covers a larger or smaller area, like that. <laughs> okay, so that's transparency on splines. Let's change the colour. So click on one of these sections here, and then navigate to the colour bit here. So say we want to make it blue. Blue is a nice colour. Well, yeah, we'll use blue. So you've clicked on your section, you've chose blue. Let's press apply. And over here, just like a miracle, it's made it blue. Fill up the transparency a little bit. There. You should be able to see that. Then over here, you can change the darkness of the colour as well by using this bar, just like the alpha bar there. You just move it down to make it darker, see it's gone almost black now, and then move it up, put a lighter blue again. You can also copy sections by using the copy copy button here, if I click there, I can paste it, just like that. Press OK when you're done, or cancel when you don't like what you've done, and then you've got your spline there, transparent and coloured. Okay, so that is how you colorize a spline, but um, say you've got your spline like this, said spline, and you don't like how wide it is, or you don't think it's simply not wide enough, uh, click on your highlight your spline, go to your right, and under here, modes, you'll see another mode here called shape, where it says width, width presets, width, width, there, uh, width presets and current just above the control points there we're going to be using this bit here highlight your spline then click on whip presets and change it to metropolitan as you can see the whip has now changed there to bang on 10 and then you click on set to preset whip and it's increased it to metropolitan size as you can see the whip has now increased like that you can change it back down to dirt road, which is now gone to a width of three. Press the set preset width again, and it's got thinner. You can change it yourself by putting in 30. If I go there and put 33, I can say set preset width, and it will go to 33. Uh, say you want to go put it back to the default size that you started off with, and you can't remember what it was. You click on set to optimum width and it will take it back to the size that it started off with at the start. There you go, that is how you use textures uh, using splines. Okay, now if you want to carry on and listen to how to you use objects in splines, I recommend you stay listening because I'm going to show you that now. So let's get rid of this by pressing delete and now we're going to move over to the object mode located right here at the top if you drag it up see like that click on object wait for it to load and then untick the tick here underneath texture and scroll down as you can see it's all changed now from texture to the object uh, toolboxes and it should look something like this Open up EBPS, the folder there. Open that up. Then open up, uh, say environment and art nature. Look, go down to something like trees large. Click on pine because that's the object we're going to be. We, I'm going to use now. I'm just going to make pine trees. Then drag drag it back up up to default. Scroll down and click to add object. No, add object to list. Left click, and as you can see, 
pine large has now been added to my say inventory uh, move up tick this so now you've activated that you want to use the object mode go back to the canvas right click just like the textures with the four four control points or five or whatever then press enter as you can see pines have now pines have now appeared just like the texture one you can modify it like that to make more pines and you can bend it like that press space so now I've got a nice S shape of pine trees they all move together in one spline not like not single objects like that but what you can also do is if you move those out of the way go back up to modes here click on texture as well as objects you've got them both ticked that way you've activated both modes you can then right click like this and it will use objects and textures and put them together in one spline press enter and so let me move that to metropolitan set so to pre and there we go it's put the spline texture underneath the spline object just like that moving them together as one big mode big happy pine and farm family they move together as one spline move those out of the way okay so say you've done that and you want to use something else to make a spline instead of pine trees say you want to make a wall you go back down from modes untick in the texture if you want to and you click on your object here and then you press delete scroll all the way down again find what you want to use say like we were saying the wall now we get to walls then uh, we'll use concrete medium go back up add object to list and just like before the four control points and we've got our wall there's our wall looking pretty good but I don't know if you can notice but right there there is a little gap between the one wall and the fence post let me illustrate that a bit better with a different wall let's try this one there we go big gap there between the two walls which is pointless because if you want a wall, you want it to be a proper wall. You know, you don't want any holes in the wall so people can get through or why not. So if you if you click on here and then you if you go back up to here, there's something called wall mode. If you tick that and then you make the wall again, you will notice that the distance in the distance between the one wall and the other wall has now literally disappeared. Now right next to each they're right next to each other and now you've got a proper wall where no one can just slide in between the gaps. Okay, so that's how you use the spline tools. Well, the basics anyway. Um, there are some more advanced features like randoms and uh, stuff like that, but uh, spacing and width variations. But you don't need to know that now for the basics. So, thanks for watching. And if you have any help, if you need any help, or you just want to ask something, or say, put a, post a comment or anything like that, just drop it on the video, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Happy mapping.